of my favorite pastimes is looking for big unanswered questions in science and in philosophy. My background is in the field of vision, vision science. And when we ask the question, how does vision work? You know, we have many models. A, you've all heard the camera model, the eye is like a camera. There's, it focuses an image that's upside down and backwards on the, on the retina. And then the, you know, the optic nerve carries information to the, the back of the, the brain, the visual cortex, and it creates an image there that's upside down. And, and somehow we perceive that as the world out there. You know, when, when we ask uh, young children, children in grade school, how, how do they see? How, you know, what's, what's the human experience of vision when we're children and we're just learning how our bodies work, how our perception works? And the answer is most children experience vision as an outward projection from the self that, that we see as an act of, of visualizing what's in the world. We create that image out there. Perceptually, that's how it works. But how does that work physiologically? What's the science? What's the mechanism of that? That's an unanswered question of science that fascinates me. Now, the, the Greeks thought that also that there was an outward ray of vision, that when we see that ray of vision comes from the eye and projects to the object where we see it, the image that we see. It's located, if we're seeing veridically or truly, it's located superimposed on the actual object. You know, we can't actually see the actual object, we see our own vision, we see our perception, we see our projection into space, our projection of space. So literally when we see the stars, we're seeing them at a distance. Are we seeing them at the distance the stars are? Are we seeing them at a different distance than another person looking at the same star? These are all really important questions in visual perception. We have something called phoria, where the eyes, when if we cover one eye, that eye may turn inward or outward, even though you're looking at an object, now the two eyes are triangulating at a different point in space, a different distance in space than where the actual object is. And this is relevant, say in sports, if, if you're, uh, if you're bat a batter and you're going to hit a baseball, if you're isophor and you're projecting that, triangulating the location of that ball closer than it is, you're going to swing too early. You know, and, and so you're going to foul out. And if, same way if you're a high exo, then you're going to swing too late. You're projecting it. You think there's more space and time than there is. So our, our projection varies from one person to another. Uh, and what, what's actually happening energetically? Is there actually an image that we're forming? And my answer is yes. There's evidence, there's good evidence, scientific evidence, that we are actually forming an image, not just in the retina, not just in the brain, but actually in space, where we see it. We're creating an image. And what's that made of? It's made of, of light. It's what we see is light. And what we are actually seeing is light. And we're seeing it where we see it. And we're actually seeing an image that's located where we see it. How do we know that? There's, there's two lines of evidence that I've found so far. One is in remote viewing. When remote viewers view a remote target, now this is, goes beyond the concept of seeing what's in our line of sight, of, of seeing something that is a response to an incoming light ray that comes to the retina. But when our mind sees something, for example, it could be on the other side of the planet. We can't see around the corner, right? But we can in the mind's eye. You know, we can't see it directly with the external eye, we're not seeing it, but with our inner vision, we are actually seeing it. And the evidence is that when remote viewers are seeing veridically, which means truly, they're actually getting the qualitative information about what is in that space that they're looking into in the mind, that there's actually quantum uh, energy that's measurable in that location. It's very exciting. It's, it, it, it's a yes answer to the, to the Greek philosophers who proposed that there is an outward ray of vision. And, it's, and it's, beyond, it's beyond even that because it's not just uh, limited by how a ray of light acts. It's, it's, uh, it's a, a focused 
ray of some sort that is projected in apparently in both time and space and, and not just by line of sight. So wherever you think, that's where your thought energy is. And it can change at the speed of thought, not limited by the speed of light. So it's an instantaneous ray, but it's also a ray that can transcend time into the future, into the past. Again, it's very exciting because it opens up many possibilities. For example, in the field of healing, why is it that visualization is so powerful in healing? If you're visualizing your body in a state of radiant health, that's creating an image of radiant health that we now know is a real image. It's a real energy field that you're creating. That's an information field that creates like a blueprint for health that's guiding now and triggering actions and helping your body to achieve that state. The other line of research is on remote healing. So remote viewing is one when there's accurate remote perception, whether it's in the line of sight or even beyond that, if it's in the line of the mind's sight, if you are visualizing and seeing in your mind's eye, you are actually interacting energetically on a quantum level with the thing that you're seeing. When you're seeing it accurately, there's a measurable energy at the object that you're seeing, even if it's enclosed, even if it's on the other side of the planet. No, it doesn't matter where it is, and it's not time dependent. It's independent of time. It gives us clues that this is working on a spirit level, on a consciousness level, not on a, a level that's limited by the physics of, of the body and electromagnetism in terms of propagating waveforms in, in, in forward time. So in, in the healing research, again, what they find when there's an interaction that has a healing effect, there's a measurable field effect in that remote place. And this is typically done with remote, similar to remote viewing, where there's no direct line of sight. It could be thousands of miles away, and the distance does not affect you know, it, how we know it's, it's not uh, a, a forward propagating electromagnetic field like a, like a light wave in forward time is that, well, that dissipates from the source with this, the, square of, uh, squ the square root of distance, uh, where this has n distance has no effect, and also the, it can uh, have an effect across time, forward or backward in time. So it's more of a scalar wave or a torsion wave, as the Russian, Russian research will uh, refer to it, different terms and different, different uh, uh, avenues of research but it all comes together to say that, that the mind and spirit are working in a very different way than the body, and yet the two coordinate together, the two integrate together. You're obviously using your body, your spirit is embodied in this life, and by using this embodied spirit, this consciousness, this conscious body, as a coherent whole, as a unit, it can be very powerful in accomplishing healing at a distance, in, in accomplishing uh, gaining of information at a distance. And, and those, as the diagnostic and therapeutic processes in remote healing, are, are crucial. So that's something that we now know is real. If you know it's real, then it's worth putting energy into. It's a, it's a skill that you can develop. It's a gift that we all have to some degree. It's part of being human. And by practicing uh, and developing the underlying skills of that, like the power of visualization, you can enhance that ability as well.